guys, today we're here, boots on the ground in Tipton, Georgia, with the University of Georgia, Miss Lisa Baxter. Gonna learn all things hay today. Mm -hmm. Thanks Absolutely. for having us. I'm glad, glad you all could make it. It's a great time to come to Tifton. This morning is great. <laughs> We've caught a cool morning. We have. <laughs> this is nice. What brought you here to Tifton and how long have you been working with the university? Yeah, so I've been in this role for just over six years. I've been here for eight. And when it came time after graduating with my PhD and trying to figure out where I was going to settle down for my career, there is no better ag experiment station in the country. I may be a little biased as also a Bulldog grad, but there's no better place to be. So from where you're standing right here, doesn't look like it just around, but you are within a couple miles of, of 30 different research crops at any one time. And in the surrounding counties, 30 to 60 production crops. It's an incredibly diverse area. What made you gravitate to grass, to hay? What, what led you down this path? So like every 18 year old girl going to college, I thought I wanted to be a vet. And, and I finished my first four years and I could if I ever do decide to go back. But I figured out during those first few years that my skills weren't really in vet medicine. I wanted to be more preventative. I wanted to be more on the system side and animal nutrition is the heart of all of that. And a lot of animal issues can be prevented with good grass. Well, what, what are we gonna do today? I see some hay bales. Oh. I see some, you know, I look at a hay bale. I don't know one from another. I'm sure that's <laughs> not the case. Um, what are we gonna get into today? Yeah, so my goal is to show you the start to finish of when I have a producer problem till we give them a solution. So that goes from finding a new grass, testing the grass, scaling it up to hay production and different management practices, uh, and then bringing in that animal side of it. So we're a little bit of everything in a very short period here this morning. Okay. Well, get my hands dirty, we get into it? Absolutely, All let's right. do this. Let's do so this is pretty standard hay coring probe. Um, we, you have manual ones you can hand crank in I ain't for that in research. No. So we hook them to a, a power drill here. This is gonna help bore into it. And this is what's called a spiral assist to help kind of alleviate uh, the pressure that you need to put on it going in. Pull it back out. Pop that off. The hay sample in there. So even though it kind of looks kind of dingy on the outside from sun bleaching, uh, the net wrap is really helping protect that forage quality inside till we can get these bales shipped out. We get them moved very quickly. Uh, it just depends, but we have taken practices here by controlling vegetation, stacking them correctly and so on, that they could sit here for, you know, a couple weeks to a couple months and not lose appreciable quality. What kind of grass are we looking at? So that is Bermuda grass. Okay. Um, we don't know the specific variety. Um, we're hoping to, to test that this summer but it, it's mixed Bermuda that you see growing all out here. So all of these bales came from these fields out here. Uh, the goal with these bales, when I started, this was a less than desirable hay field. It wasn't the pretty green grass you see yeah. behind you here. Uh, and so when a producer buys a field, they can't go in and just kill out everything and renovate. They gotta make money today. Mm -hmm. And so that was my goal over here was to say, how can we use our extension recommendations to make this better? So mm -hmm. I don't do anything here that a producer can't do. Right. I don't use any equipment they wouldn't use, any chemicals they wouldn't use. It's all producer recommendations. Tell why you have a quota here. I need big equipment to move big bales at the end of the day. And so when it came time to start stacking, you know, the equipment in my research program, it was a pleasure to start working with our local Kubota dealer here. Um, they have a long history with our campus, made sense to start working with them. Um, so I, I've heard, know your way around a tractor, could use some help moving these bales this morning. Uh, but take it easy, I'm very partial to this tractor here. It's the most horsepower of any tractor on the campus to the tiniest researcher, and it's really starting to go to my head. Have you seen me drive before? Are you sure you want me to do this? Yeah, it's insured, it's fine. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> they can always send another one. I don't think I scratched it. 
So I have a really unique opportunity right here. Uh, we are sitting between the main interstate and the main highway in Tiff County. And so it's a great marketing opportunity to advertise what we're doing here, keep people tied in with the university, uh, or in this case, your show. So I have, say, I have saved the bales just for you. I've resisted the urge to put yeah. something on there. Okay. Uh, so if you want to take this opportunity to do the, the bale billboard here with okay. Ag to Asphalt, um, love for you to do that. How do you, do you normally do a, you don't a, do a letter per I bale. I do a letter per bale. Oh my gosh. Um, so, How do you spell asphalt? So words suddenly look wrong when they're on this scale. You're telling me make, I'm nervous. It makes you second guess spelling. I <laughs> well, it makes me question the English language. <laughs> you got some weeds. Oh, we have all the weeds in the southeast here, especially down in the deep south. Do y'all get um, a hard freeze here enough to reset? Not, not always. Not always um, yeah. I've been wearing shorts and a tank top on Christmas Day here before. I, I would rather take my rig to where the weeds are, mm -hmm. even if that means I got to drive a little further, sweat a little more. I don't want to contribute any more weeds to the, the ecosystem. Yep. It's 2025. Why do we need to learn more about chemicals and weed control? All right. So there's always a need for diverse active ingredients out there. Uh, as new ingredients are being built, they're helping us prevent herbicide resistance uh, and other chemical resistance too. That's just mostly where I work is on the herbicide side. Uh, and keeping herbicides as part of an integrated weed management plan. We have a lot of tools in the toolbox to control weeds, but spraying a strategic herbicide is often the more sustainable option when we look in terms of the carbon footprint and research or resource utilization than if we had to come mow every other week to keep everything suppressed. Ready to gear up? Yeah, let's, All right. yeah. Then you can put on the, the belly or the chest strap. And you turn it off and you turn and you go back on the next one. Oh, I started a little late. <laughs> All right, so when we're looking at does a treatment work, whether it's a new grass, a chemical we're spraying, a fertilizer, whatever it may be, ultimately it doesn't matter how much we just think it's pretty. It's got to make an animal gain weight, produce milk, wool, something. And so the old school way to do that was to actually put the sample in the animal and get the sample back out. It's pretty expensive. We've got better ways now. But to calibrate that procedure and to test its accuracy, we do still have live animals that are essentially like a donor animal to get rumen contents from so we can see how well something is digested. Unfortunately, the cows had a different schedule than what you did, so we pulled this earlier. Uh, I hope you don't have a weak stomach. We We're going to find out. We're going to find out. I mean, so um, a cow has what is a different chambers in their stomach, and they go through what's curbial uh, digestion, whereas we have more of chemical digestion. So it is. this is all different digested material. You can tell there's some stems in there mm -hmm. that are a little slower. Uh, you got the juices bubbling down you're in there. You want me to grab some? You can you? grab some. You're one. I can tell. You're <laughs> me too. This is one of my favorite things to show people because yeah, we've got the grass out here, but if the cow can't break it down, then we did not. We just grew grass, right. and the grass has to go somewhere. It's not the end point of our ecosystem, and so our goal is to make grass so good that it spends a little bit of time in there to give the cow and the bugs the nutrition that it needs in its stomach, but then to pass it on because that's where things are absorbed and the animal actually gains and performs. Even a better. cow's stomach is actually usually 10 degrees or so above whatever ambient temperature right. is. No, so I, it was quite toasty yesterday. I feel like this would be a lot worse to hold if it was hot. You'll have to ask your colleagues. Okay, I'll ask. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the, the rumen has about 55 gallon capacity. And so you go in up to your shoulder to get a really good sample.
Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to see the footage of that. <laughs> thank you, boys. <laughs> So for all this hard work, George Boot wants to say thank you. So they sent you some options. Um, <laughs> do with them what you may. I, I see yeah. you are in tennis shoes. So I'm yeah. guessing with that much walking and that much trialing, you're usually moving a lot, but yeah. want to throw a set, set of boots on? Yeah, we, uh, we keep the tennis shoes so I can go through three pairs in a day uh, because of all the wet grass that I walk through. Um, also because I am the Lego Forge specialist, which you'll get to meet at our next stop. I did have to wear my Lego tennis shoes this morning, so. Okay, well, but, uh, now I will you got add some Georgia these boots. to my rotation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for showing us around today, taking some time, uh, and teaching a little bit. That's um, it's really yeah. cool, um, knowing that there's progress always happening right here in Tifton. So thank you for letting us come by today. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to showcase it. Uh, Answers take a long time, so we're always trying to think what's the next answer for the next problem that we don't even know is here yet. Yeah. And a little bit about the Legos. Yeah. I hear this has spiraled a bit out of control for you. It has, so uh, I'd like to introduce you to Lego Forge Specialist. Uh, South Georgia isn't always conducive to me being on camera, uh, so I have Lego Forge Specialist that helps with our social media and outreach efforts. Um, really connects ag to a broad generation and, and, and different backgrounds, much like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do it in Lego form uh, and love my little Kubota tractor baler. It comes to all my little hayfield demos. So I hear you're partial to watermelons. So it only made sense to find a Lego NASCAR driver uh, and add some little watermelon details there. Well, I hope my car is as fast as a Formula One car <laughs> the rest of the year. So. <laughs> That'd be cool. So right. thank you and uh, see you down the road. Thank you.